hey, what's up? So, so my name is Freddy Ceballos. Uh, you know, welcome to your daily dose of awesome, your live 15 minutes of daily motivation, inspiration, and education so you can get started right. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm watching your comments. Uh, you know, so sorry about that. Some technical issues. Uh, today's topic is on the Herbalife FTC settlement and the impact it's going to have on your business, your income, and your future, and, and how to thrive under these, these uh, circumstances. My name is Freddy Sabalos. I'm a uh, lead generation and online marketing expert. Sometimes I follow up even the technical parts, <laughs> uh, but I still do really well. I specialize in helping both home business owners uh, in the network marketing, affiliate marketing, and direct selling space multiply their incomes using the internet. Now, I actually built my first six-figure network marketing business using some of the strategies that I'll be covering uh, a little later before, after I talk about the FTC settlement. Uh, with Herbalife, and I've also been responsible for over $11 million in gross income in my own home businesses. Now, that's money that's actually coming into my business, not not sales and then, you know, commissions afterwards. And uh, I've also been responsible for tens and millions of dollars uh, of income for my clients, helping people, you know, launch their online businesses or launch their online presence or, or build their, their home business using the internet. Now, if you're watching this training right now, I highly recommend you uh, go to our fan page and actually subscribe to any future uh, postings of these live videos or any videos, period. Now, if you're watching this on mobile, the way to do that is you actually can click on the top right corner. And uh, when you click on the top right corner, you can actually just turn on notifications and, and you'll be sure to actually get notified on your phone whenever I do another live. And so you can actually either watch it live or watch the replay later. At least you'll have the reminder there. Uh, this is how we deliver our most impactful training here at Elite Marketing Pro, and it's completely free. You don't have to you know, do anything other than just tune in. If you're watching this on a desktop, then you can pretty much go to our fan page. If you're watching this video, above there should be our logo along with our name, company name. Uh, you can click on that, take you to our fan page, click liked. Under liked, uh, you know, there's a pull down menu where you'll be able to turn on notifications, specifically notifications as it relates to video and live posts. Uh, again, that's how we deliver our most impactful daily training, and it's completely free to you. Uh, so I hope you can join us for that. So let's dive right into the content. Like, uh, there's actually a, a post that I recently wrote, an actual blog post, uh, pretty extensive and and written in just plain English, so it's it's clear on what it is. So no legal jargon. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just kind of interpreted things as I as I saw them come in uh, a, f a couple months ago, and so. I go deep into the settlement, what it means, uh, and I'll be talking a little bit about that, but I wanted to actually share a little bit of a, a few anecdotes here uh, as it relates to, to this. So uh, I was, so on a, my last Daily Dose of Awesome on Friday, uh, when I had a guest, I had a, you know, Jason Dutt, and Jason is a seven-figure earner, uh, multiple seven-figure earner, third-generation network marketer, so his grandfather got started in the industry and, uh, and you know, and, you know, just crushed it back back in I think believe the 50s or 60s mm -hmm. and uh, you know obviously that that knowledge has been passed on and so they built their businesses in a certain way um, and he was telling me that his company uh, you know even 10 years ago was seeing this coming seeing this the things happening where the FTC he thought they thought the FTC would eventually try to impose this so he, he his company started uh, not only encouraging their reps to distribute to create more you know product sales and uh, and up volume through cut product customers they actually imposed their own voluntary you know uh, retail requirement and that was very interesting and this was 10 years ago where they started working on uh, you know boosting their their retail volume and uh, you know and so so this actually doesn't come out as a surprise to him and actually, uh, his business is he's well in his business he's well prepared for it and uh, and we talked a little bit about what people can do in order to prepare for that you know and prepare for the situations guys let me know if you guys can still hear me I want to make sure that that uh, the technical issues are resolved and so and I was actually talking to him about my cousins I have really close cousins uh, you know I basically my childhood was spent with this with this family they're they're like uh, you know, slight extension of my of my uh, immediate family, and spent uh, a lot of a lot of weeks just hanging out through my childhood and, and playing baseball, you know, basketball with my cousins. And of course, we all grew up, became adults. I actually introduced network marketing to my cousin. Uh, you know, one of my cousins, 
uh, many years ago and I, I showed a board plan and, and wasn't very skilled at it. I wasn't very good at it. I didn't recruit him. He was very skeptical. And, you know, the funny thing is a few years later, uh, his wife ends up, uh, you know, becoming an Herbalife distributor. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I guess I was talking to the wrong person in terms of making decisions uh, as it relates to network marketing. But long story short, they became extremely successful uh, Herbalife distributors. And uh, in fact, they actually decided to open up, well, they were one of the first people to open up a retail store. And, uh, so, and so they opened up a retail store and they actually ended up getting a visit from Herbalife Corporate, uh, as they tell the, uh, as I remember the story. Um, the reason they got a visit from Herbalife Corporate, they thought they were in trouble. And Herbalife was actually uh, shocked as to the amount of volume they were producing from a retail perspective. And at first, Herbalife pretty much thought something shady was going on because they never they hadn't seen numbers like these from a retail perspective. And so they got a visit, you know, Herbalife said, wow, you guys are really, you know, retailing, you're really doing this, you know, congratulations. And, uh, and then, you know, so they still continue that store to this day. And, and since then, a lot of reps have, have opened up, not only are they retailing a lot, but they've opened stores. The reason I'm telling you this is because Herbalife itself, from my perspective, from the, my personal experience and what I've seen, uh, is a heavily focused retail, uh, you know, network. Um, it's one of the most, you know, retail focused companies, I believe. Now, I'm not in Herbalife. I get, I have zero affiliation with Herbalife. Uh, this is just a commentary, commentary on their business practices. So, uh, you know, so the shocking thing, you know, when... Herbalife was investigated. That was very surprising to me. Uh, I didn't think it would go anywhere. I thought, you know, you know, based on what I observed from especially my family and then uh, other people, uh, some top distributors, like multi multiple six-figure earners in Herbalife, uh, I thought they were going to be fine. And when this settlement came out, it was it blew my mind that Herbalife had agreed to that to to these restrictions until I thought about it a little more. I thought about what my cousin was doing. I thought about what a lot of top producers in Herbalife are, were doing and I'm like hmm actually what I think is happening is they're actually uh there are because their Herbalife is so retail focused maybe it'll affect their business in the short term and the long term my theory was that I think if if Herbalife has intentions of continuing to grow in the United States I think their intention is to try to have the FTC stamp out their competition and so just to review what some of those things were, and let me let me know your thoughts as I'm going through this, what, what your perspective is, because I, I really want to uh, be a little interactive here. And I'll probably go a little long just because we got started late because of the audio issues. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to I want to get some some of your thoughts on, on this. First and foremost, the you know, there were th there were three main things that came out of that. Uh, there were some other th other things that came out of the settlement as it relates to actually those stores, you know, how to properly train people to have actual brick and mortar businesses, essentially. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that because it doesn't affect most of us. Uh, the main things that came out of that settlement was the elimination of auto ship. So companies have basically built their entire businesses and gone into momentum as a result of basically almost exclusive personal consumption with very little retailing. And so the auto ship... Getting rid of auto ship, mandatory auto ship, where auto ship is a requirement for getting paid, where a distributor has to be an auto ship in order to earn commissions, or a distributor, uh, you know, basically is just required for whatever reason to to be on auto ship to be a distributor. Period. And so, uh, so that you know that has is gone. I don't know if like they're getting rid of auto ship altogether or it just can't be a requirement. I did, I, w I don't think it would be altogether because someone voluntarily subscribing. For, for goods and services of any kind uh, should be a right for anybody. But who knows? This is the FTC. But definitely mandatory auto ship is gone. And uh, what that means is, you know, in t organizations that were created and built on personal consumption where people were uh, reps were only, you know, buying the product themselves and not retailing and then just recruiting more people that would do the same. That business model, I believe, is, is, is dying and going to be gone very soon. Uh, but herbal, these were restrictions only for Herbalife. Herbalife can't do that anymore if it was doing it at all. And so that's gone. And, and that, that was huge. And I think Herbalife agreed to that because they weren't really doing it. Um, so, but they knew other companies were. So 
Uh, so that was a big thing. And, and building an entire downline where there's no retailing is, you know, it's a house of cards. Eventually it crumbles. You see people that earn six, seven figures, you know, coming out of the gate and all of a sudden their, their business kind of goes down because there's no, there's no stability through retail customers. Uh, the second point that came out of that was uh, the 66% requirement. Uh, basically, 66% of your retail, whether it's through your downline or you personally, uh, base, has to be retail customers. So you can only be responsible for 33% uh, or so of the volume, you know, meaning what you personally consume as a distributor, and the rest has to be done through uh, through retail customers. So, uh, so that was huge. But be, you know, again, this ties into the auto ship thing. If an entire downline is is being built and the volume the sales volume is, is being built on only personal consumption that's a problem in fact uh fdc considers that the definition of a pyramid scheme apparently herbalife now kind of agrees with them and in my opinion that's essentially a pyramid scheme too because the only reason people are doing the business the only reason uh people are building and growing an organization is not to serve you know society with a, a, a innovative product it's just a money game it's just a money scheme. And so, you know, that's, that's you know, the practice of that is going to go away as a result of this requirement where now 66% of your sales volume has to come from retail customers. Otherwise, you will not get paid. So imagine that. You can have, like, uh, you know, millions of dollars of volume going through an organization as, as a top rep in your company. and But unless 66% of it is coming from retail customers, you don't get your commission check. So that's, but that's, again, that's a restriction Herbalife agreed to and Herbalife only for now. The the third point is, you know, that, that relates to you is, how is this going to impact your business? How is this going to impact you? And the bottom line is that I think this is kind of like a precursor for what the FTC will eventually put out as it relates to network marketing. And, uh, and you got to be prepared for it. You got to be ready for what's going to come up now will the restrictions be as strict as what herbalife has i don't know no one knows uh but i I think eventually the ftc will come out with some guidelines now the ftc the important thing the ftc can't make law so there's no ruling you know people use the ftc say the term ftc ruling uh the ftc actually can't make law it can only provide guidelines and then it's up to the courts to decide if something is illegal or not and uh or and then uh, also, obviously, Congress is the only are the only uh, institutions that actually could actually legislate law. So there's a little bit of a, a, a of a silver lining. But even then, even if all of this was impact, you know, instituted tomorrow as law passed by Congress, then you got to be prepared for whatever's going to come up, no matter what, because the FTC can pretty much, uh, at their own whim, decide to shut down your company and you're gone. Now, what we do here at Elite Marketing Pro, and what we teach. Uh, we teach uh, the ability to generate your own prospects and leads online. So if you still have a, a recruitment-focused business, you're able to generate those leads and, and not only generate leads for your business, we also teach people how to create a following. So because the fact of the matter is, you know, in, in any numbers, whether it's offline or online, if you if you prospect 100 people, if you generate 100 leads, whether you generate those leads uh, talking to people and you know uh, at in different public places or or your friends and family or whether you generate the leads online where you connect with people 100 people online most of those people are not going to join your business the numbers just work out that way uh, over 95 percent of the people are going to basically say I- i'm i'm not ready to get started uh, the difference is online you can still leverage technology to keep in touch with them you can build a following in fact they'll want to stay in touch with you you don't have to actively do anything to follow up with them over time when you're doing it offline you do you have to constantly follow up have your list and 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 keep following up every few months to see if the timing is right with online you have you can leverage things like uh, email autoresponder facebook live social social media to create and grow that following you've probably already seen that in a lot of with a lot of leaders in the network marketing space whether they're selling training or whether they're putting just valuable content you know videos blog posts etc they're building a following. What they're doing is actually they're creating security. Should anything ever happen to their income through network marketing, they have that following. That includes you know, the 5% who are in the organization and includes everybody else. I currently have an uh, a email list 
of over 100,000 home business owners who follow and read my emails, read my blog posts every single day. Now, this is something that was built over time. Um, and, and so it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But even when I was uh, a brand new distributor and had first started on the Internet, in my first uh, you know, few months, I grew, grew a list of about 700 people that first year. And I used that 700 list to create a, a six-figure income uh, in that second year. And so it doesn't have to take very long and it, you don't necessarily need a big list. But, you know, as that list grew and grew, what happened is my security grew and grew. I no longer was dependent on any company. And since then, I had, you know, been uh, involved in a few companies before I decided to retire from the industry. But I'd been involved in a few companies and I was never worried about whether that company would be there or not next year. Now, I, was, I wasn't worried from a personal standpoint. I like the people there and, and so forth. And so that's the security that building online creates. The prospect list you generate online using uh, social media or other online tools allows you to create that security. And should anything happen, you can always announce to that list, hey, I decided to leave this company or, or this happened. Uh, I think my next move is going to be here. I'm going to go join this business, this organization, or do this. Uh, and I invite you to check out this webinar, this presentation, to see what I'm doing. You see the difference? You see the power of, of that? where all of a sudden you just mobilize all these people and a bunch of the people that over time got to know you and connect with you uh, are going to want to join. And so that 5% of conversion will actually grow over time to a big, much bigger chunk of that audience because now they, they trust you pretty much more than anyone in this industry. And so that's the idea. You could actually do this also with product customers. And I actually talk about that in the post on how you actually create a following around a certain niche that's related to your products so you can retail so that this issue is never a problem with the FTC and so you can either create security by creating a following so that no matter what happens with your company you could always shift or you can create a following as it relates to people that actually see you as an expert and authority in a certain area as it relates to uh, retailing and and, uh, and you know helping people with whatever whatever uh, part of it, whatever niche or marketplace uh, your your product serves and so so that's pretty much it Amanda has a question real quick I was an MLM where all they were about is recruiting and didn't really want us to push product we had to be on auto ship if we wanted to get a paycheck and commission exactly and uh, and Cynthia says some people want auto ship it doesn't matter what you want it doesn't matter what people want what matters is what the law is and what the courts say and so that's what's happening and that's why I'm a proponent of attraction marketing and and what what if you notice a lot of leaders uh, online, the people you're following right now, the people whose list you're on, uh, they're creating Facebook lives, blog posts, etc. Um, all that training, all the systems that they use to create all that, everything, the the methodology, the strategy, we are you know this company, Elite Marketing Pro, is a source of all that information through my business partner Tim Irway. Tim Irway was the, was the first in our our, our space to actually introduce. Uh, these concepts of building a brand, building a following online called attraction marketing. Uh, and he built, a, you know, a $30,000 per month income uh, right out of the gate, uh, you, leveraging technology, using attraction marketing, what he was able to do. Uh, he's not involved in the industry anymore, but he pretty much proved the concept work over 15 years ago. And now we have a lot more technology available to us, a lot more to leverage with social media. So I encourage you to actually go to the uh, the top, uh, go to the description in this video and actually go, go to EliteMarketingPro.com slash go. If you want to actually get started learning some of this stuff, I have a free course that's available. It's a 10-day boot camp. You can consume each module uh, very quickly uh, within a matter of basically five minutes. So And, and it will kind of just get you started, get you understand how it is this online brand building and lead generation works. And also, I, I encourage you to also in the description, check out the, the, the full post that I did on, on the Herbalife FTC settlement and, and how not only, you know, in detail what each uh, piece of the important things that came out of that settlement means, but I, I dive deeper into how to actually build a brand, how to actually create a brand around a product as well if you want to retail heavily. And, and then some other some other insights. So that's it for today's Daily Dose of Awesome. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Sorry for the technical issues in the beginning. I'll see if there's a way to edit this video so you don't have to, like, uh, you know, listen to a, a, a mute Fernie for the first uh, two or three minutes. So uh, take care, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.